everyone, hi there, welcome back. This is uh, Nigel here from Nigel's Modeling Bench and this is part two of the Airfix Hellcat build. Uh, currently, I don't know, three hours after the uh, after the first part was made, so this is all sort of set and cured off now and everything nicely. So um, let's crack on. Now, if you remember, I said I was going to put some Mr. Surfacer in here, in this, um, in this join where the floor meets the bulkhead, and I've done that. If you don't know what Mr. Surfacer is, this is it. It's a Mr. Hobby product and they do it in a 1000, they do a 500, a 1000, a 1200 and a 1500. If you only buy one, I would recommend this one, the 1000, because if you want it to get a bit thicker, you can just put a drop on a, on a bit of plastic or a bottle or something and it will thicken up in minutes and then you'll have a thicker consistency. If you need to thin it, you can use uh, Mr. Cutter Leveling Thinners to thin it. Uh, I'd have to be careful about going back to basics too much because people don't like it. I've had a couple of um, comments about me talking about tools in the first part, even though I said just fast forward if you want to. So you can't please all the people all the time, eh? So um, anyway, so if, if you are new to the hobby, then ask me some questions, whatever I'll answer, I'll answer you individually. Um, so in this area here, you know, you've got all these rivets and everything. So to get rid of that, I'm going to use a cotton bud and I'm going to get some Mr. Leveling and Thinners on the cotton bud. OK, and I'm just going to squeeze some of that on the sides of the bottle. Don't want it absolutely dripping wet. And then just rub this over here and you'll see that what happens is it will remove the excess from the from the faces, but it will leave it down where I need it to stay in, down in the groove. Don't rub too hard because you'll end up just pulling it all out. Um, if you use Mr. Plastic Putty, you can do the same sort of thing as this, but with water. The problem I find with Plastic Putty is, um, I personally think it's just like um, tile adhesive or something, or just wall filler, <laughs> because, or decorator's caulk, because um, it doesn't seem to stick to the plastic at all. It just seems to sit on the surface, whereas, <laughs> This stuff sort of dries on and bites. Um, you'll also see some people use cellulose thinners for doing this. I would seriously recommend against that, especially with the Airfix plastic. Um, cellulose thinners will attack the plastic. There we go. Now you can see I've wiped that a bit too much and I've wiped it out of that gap. And I've left a couple of little pin holes in there. So I'll have to go over that again, which is a shame because I was planning to fit that plastic pipe in there now. This, this piece here that goes in. Um, but it's just going to be in the way. So I'm going to have to put some more Mr. Surfacer in there and let it go off. In fact, what I'll try and do, try and do this on camera for you. Um, it seems to me that people think, a lot of people think that everybody building this kit will be an advanced modeler, but I, I find that is not the case. Um, and I remember I built the, the Airfix Spitfire, the 124 scale, which was like the equivalent to this in those days. Um, I built that when I was, I don't know, nine, even eight. So, you know, I always like to try and please everyone. And it's, it's very difficult. Um, I think what happens is I think people will tune into YouTube and think, oh great, there's a video on the Airfix Hellcat. I think I'm going to build that. And then I'll get questions. What tools did you use? What did you use for this? What did you use for that? I say, well, go back and look at my other videos. I can tell you the here, there and everywhere. And they just ask the same questions again. So it's um, it's good to just try and advertise the fact that or, or tell everybody what it is you're using. Um, and there we go. So there we are. That's that done. So you're able to do that even while it's still wet, as long as it's only a tiny little gap like that. Uh, actually, before we go any further, I'm going to actually paint some more on here because this surround needs a bit of attention. Um, it's sitting slightly lower on the, the, the part that went in is sitting slightly lower than the other side. So it kind of looks odd. So I'm going to, um, it might be worth, if, if you haven't built this kit, get a really good fit on the bottom edge, sand some off the top or something, or you'll have to push it up and have a gap. But um, yeah, I've noticed there's a bit of a step in there, whereas there isn't a step there, you see. So uh, just play with this, now it's gone off a bit. You can see how thick it goes, starts to go off, how quick it starts to go off. 
and I'm able to play with that now and make it stay where it was almost like a putty all right so that's that can stay like that now and then what I'll do is with a, a slightly dampened swab I'll just wipe away the excess and that will be that and the other thing with Mr. Th uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Hobby Mr. Hobby Mr. Surfacer um, I don't ever clean my brush I just wipe it off next time I use it put it in the Mr. Surfacer it'll be uh, straight away it'll be settled straight away it'll melt again sorry so I'm trying to think while I'm talking which is uh, not very easy so that's done now so I'm able to fit that tube so this little pipe here this was from the previous page this is going to go into here like so and down oops grab a pair of tweezers so we can slot that in there like so no we can't this is going wrong because it's on camera if it wasn't on camera it would go in in about one second No, that's what's going wrong. It goes in behind there, right? And I know that this clips underneath these triangular brackets. Like so. And then that one goes down in that hole. And that one can go into that hole. Almost seems like it wants to be a bit longer there to, to reach into that hole. It's a bit weird. It's kind of not long enough. What I think I'm going to do is put a piece of plastic in there. So I think what I'll do is glue the, I'll use the quick setting. I'll glue the bottoms in. And I'll just put a drop on there. Hold that. I mean, none of this is going to get seen anyway because it's all going to be behind the seat. So, yeah, that is a bit. Um, it's a bit short. Maybe it's a short shot. I don't know. But that pipe doesn't reach into that hole. And if you look on here. It certainly looks like it should be a bit longer. So either it's a short shot or it's got broken off or something. Maybe I've cut it off. I don't know. So um, I'll just get a bit of plastic rod and uh, make a little extension for that. So I'll be back in a second. Right, so I've cut a piece of plastic rod. It's about one millimetre diameter. So I've got a piece of one millimetre plastic rod there. It's about two millimetres long, if that. And I'm just going to put some glue in that hole. Pick up this and put it in the hole like so give it a nudge make sure it's all the way in and now this one you can sit on top of it it's a little bit too long so what I'm going to do is get my little Tamiya cutters I've had some questions asked about these Tamiya cutters there are two there's 74123 and 74035 these are 74035 and I think my other ones, these with the point on the front, are 74123. Um, I think these are stronger. I, they just look to be ground at a different angle to give a th thicker cutting edge. But again, I can't talk about tools too much because people get upset. So. And there we go so there's that little extension made there just to make that pipe sit in there a bit more naturally maybe on your kit it'll be okay maybe they're all too short maybe I cut it off I don't know but uh, whatever you can see that's a very easy fix
Okay, so that's that done. So now, other than this plate, we finish that page, and obviously the fire extinguisher, which is, which is here. So let's go over the page, and it's telling us we need to glue the front bulkhead into the floor, like so. So let's have a look at cleaning some of this up. Um, where's my new stick? There it is. So I'm just going to make sure there's no moulding flash or anything on this floor. Make sure it's all nice and flat. Okay. That's all looking good. And now that's going to glue into there. And we've got to make sure that these little rudder pedal support members go in those slots as well. So, yeah, that one wants to keep popping out. So we're going to use the quick setting again and just put some around there to lock that into place to stop it popping out. I'll do the same on the other side. And it's popped out again. There we go. Let's just hold that for a minute, that'll go off. Quick setting stuff is uh, it's remarkably fast at setting, but it's um, quite smelly as well, which isn't very nice. So there we go. And then I'm going to use this one, the plastic weld, purely because it's a bigger brush. I was also asked about the plastic weld, sort of what is it? And um, it's here. This is it here. EMA model supplies plastic weld. Okay. It also does ABS. It's a really good glue. But then this this extra thin quick setting does ABS really well as well. So worth remembering. And I think Tammy actually do an ABS cement, don't they? Which I need to get because I've got some ABS work to do. There we go. And that, if I need, if I can be bothered, I may put some Mr. Servicer in that joint as well, but I don't think it's going to need it. Now it's telling us here, we need to align it all in the fuselage. So what I'm going to do is get the fuselage, sprue out the box again. I'm not sure if I showed you in the review guys, I, I certainly don't remember mentioning it, but on this fuselage skin you can see that you've got the, um, the stretch skin but also you've got these like overlapped panels. I don't think I showed you that in the review. If you look here, you can see these panels are overlapped just like the real thing. You can, you can hear it as my nail goes over it. It's um, yeah, incredible, incredible detail. So I'm just going to stick this down here and then plonk this in. So I'm assuming that you should never assume anything. No, that doesn't go there, it goes in there, doesn't it? So that's going in like that. So they're telling you to make sure it all lines up, but there's actually nothing to line it up with. Um, which seems a bit strange. They're telling you to use one half as a jig to set the correct angles for this assembly, but what are the correct angles? Just, there's, there's no, there's a recess for the rear bulkhead to sit into there, but for the front there's nothing.
So I don't know what to um I mean it's all quite flexible anyway because it's airflex plastic, it's soft. But I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. It looks like on the instructions, when you look at it from the side, the bulkhead just sticks out the front of the um, this area here just sticks out of the front of the uh, of the fuselage. So let's have a look. If anything, I may it may be a touch too low. Maybe it needs to come up a touch. But I mean, it, it, it flexes that much anyway. So how about on this side? Is there anything on this side? Beauty anyway, but with using these um, liquid cements, if if we decide that we need to move anything, what you can do is just run liquid cement down that joint again, and it will soften it, and you'll be able to move it around. But um, I'm thinking that that's probably okay, like that. Although when I put it in this fuselage shaft, it doesn't look quite right, according to the drawing and the instructions. Oh, I don't know, maybe it's okay. Hmm. I think it's going to have to be a case of, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, guys, because it's, um, it's all quite flexible anyway, as I keep saying. Oh, we'll just leave it like that, I think. I think that'll be fine. Um, Basically, you can't come off of anything square because the, um, the this isn't square. This is a this is this is the wing profile here. Um, I guess they should be parallel, but then there's a pin stick at the back of there, so that's sort of difficult to make that parallel. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it like that and hopefully it'll be okay um it looks kind of right but there's i mean I, you'd assume them saying this there'd be something in here in the fuselage to sort of lock that into place but there isn't so just to make sure you've got what i'm on about put that rear bulkhead in there into that groove like so and there is nothing for the front strange Okay then guys, I just want to clear up some confusion if anyone, anyone's getting confused here. Um, if you look here, it looks like the top of that inner bulkhead is up against the actual skin of the fuselage. And if you go back here, doo -doo 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 -doo, where we're actually putting it all together, it looks the same. Okay, so here we look at a picture, it looks like it's up against the fuselage and when we see it upside down, it looks like these side members are just above that wing cutout. Okay, so when we put this in place like this, oops, when we have this in here, and I hold that in, if I have that just above, like that, yep, yeah, so it's now locked in place. So that's just above as it shows it there. Okay, it's just above that wing recess. The top's still a mile away. But if you pull the fuselage down, it joins in. What it is, what's confusing is, the fuselage is spread open. This area here is spread open. So we need to pull that down to meet it. So that's where the confusion comes. Um, I personally think that we've been better off not even putting that in the instructions at all. Uh, because, I mean, it's all lined up absolutely perfectly using the kit parts. I mean, the... The angle here is determined by these two gussets and the angle here is determined by those two plates. So, you know, if we need to, if we need to 
pulling about a bit we can but um I just wanted to clear that up because that was I was getting quite confused there it was showing that like that and that touching the top and then when you go over and you see it's all sort of you know all seamed up and all fitting beautifully ah squeeze the fuse lash together and it does fit beautifully and it does fit very beautifully so um really pleased there right let's get on with this seat let's let this go off and i'm going to get on with this seat i'm going to miss this stage out here for now because i want to do a lot of green painting and stuff and this is actually not green just one other thing guys i forgot to mention regarding this the sharper eye amongst you may notice the seat belts have gone um the way this is made these parts this part goes in here and this is the rear end of the seat belts molded onto the rail that the seat belts go over um here they are here and what i've decided to do is cut them off because they're going to go over like that i mean obviously to get them to go back over that way i'm going to have to cut them in half because the the y section won't go down through the well actually it might do it might stretch through there um but basically what the kit expects you to do is have those like that behind the sorry in there behind that rail if you like and then you glue the other side the top of the seat belts to it here you see okay which means you've got a glue joint there so then you've got to sand and get that to look like one and everything so what i decided to do was actually cut them off and what i did was i basically sliced through and just kept changing my angle and then just sanded this back round again so now even if i do use these seat belts i'm going to drape them in position glue them together let them set and then take them out work on them and then paint them as a as a seat belt and then drop them back in um i think trying to get that glue joint and get it looking like it's all one and everything i think that might be a little difficult so um that's what i thought i'd do and i think i'm probably i've emailed um hgw i've emailed tim at hgw and asked him if he's going to be doing anything for this and uh so i'll wait for his response and i'll let you know as soon as he does respond but hopefully hgw will do some belts for this and they'll be um they'll be top dollar so i've seen the edward uh, or the edward steel belts which I've, I've never actually used the steel apparently much better because they're thinner but i just don't like photo etch belts i'd rather use these than photo etch that's just my personal preference especially in this scale so this seat we can see is made up of four parts now there are ejector pin marks on the inside which i've filled and there's ejector pin marks in the back which i filled and there's ejector pin marks on the insides of the sides of the seat which i filled now if you use the dinghy no one's ever going to see them i'm not sure anyone's ever going to see these it depends how far back the seat goes um these on the sides obviously need to be done so whatever you're doing you need to fill them if you're using the dinghy don't worry about them and then we'll see if you need to do these when uh, when the time comes but the last thing you want to do is look down the side of the seat and see these great ejector pin marks in there so um i've done them anyway as a matter of course so basically this seat it's a clever little design actually goes together like that so there's your there's your gusset between the upper and lower half of the seat and that's going to need some clean up to make it oh no it's just dropped in for some reason it dropped in then so that's quite a nice little fit in there um i'm tempted to put some green in there before i do put this together because as i say when you when you start working on these and you you know you can't get the paint as soon as somebody puts a bright light on the model you see bing gray plastic in your face so um i'm tempted to put some green in there before i do anything and what i might do at the same time is put some green in here and then i can put that panel in so um let me get that done i'll be back in a sec okay so i've got my uh this is mr hobby h58 interior green just going to um basically go in under here before i fit this this floor plate and the back of the seat under here and this area in here so that when we um when we fit, fit it all together it all just uh we don't have any issues with gray plastic sticking through everywhere so I just give that a light coat initially do the back of this getting all the angles and getting all the edges and everything there's nothing worse than um getting your model built and then you put a bright light on it and like bing gray plastic shows through i've seen it on so many i've actually seen it on the on the photographs on um, forums and somebody's put a picture of their model up and it's there's all bits of gray plastic you can see in the tire treads and stuff like that and they, they can't see it in real life 
and um, I can believe I've done it myself. It's uh, it's quite incredible. Yeah, so this is the um, H58 thinned with uh, just a kind of lovely thinners. It's a very thin mix, so that it just goes down. It's very thin. It goes down silky smooth, and it will just level out beautifully. The only downside to these Mr. Color paints is they take longer to dry than like your Tamiya's or whatever. And don't get me wrong, they dry they dry fairly quickly, but it's just if you if after an hour you come and hold it, you'll probably need a thumbprint in it. Whereas with the Tamiya paints, that doesn't seem to be the case so much. And I will warn you, Ravel paints. As much as I love them, Ravel paints mixed with them, the Ravel thinners, wow, <laughs> it takes forever to go off. Okay, so I'm happy that that's done now. As I said, I'm not after a perfect, a perfect match of colour, just getting some green in there just to take away the, but I'm probably going to base colour all this black anyway. So uh, this is just to get some green when we look in. And this is my Iwata, as uh, it BR, with a 0.3 needle, I believe. I'm just going to get in here. Just get some paint in here. Who'd have thunk it, hey? Day two of a Hellcat build, and we're painting interior green. Now you can see with this paint on the detail really pops. This is gonna look so good when it's washed and dry brushed and all that good stuff. I just want to make sure we get inside all those holes, make sure we get all the edges so there's no grey plastic shows through on the edges. Make sure we get in there. I'm also going to now get in there as well. Get in under those pipes. Okay, so another coat on here, and we should be done. out loud guys I wonder what's happened to um what happened to Chris and Alex modeling they used to be uh, they were forever making airfix models usually 24 still whatever happened to them okay one more quick coat just to get some green on there and I'm gonna leave it at that I'm also just going to put some paint on there to see what it looks like that. Um, okay, that looks a bit better now. I'm talking about the gator around the bottom of the uh, control column. I'm going to go up here because we've got some paint in the airbrush. Quick 
Cool, now let's see what they look like. Yep, yeah, happy with that. there we go so there's our initial bit of green painting done I can hear you all shouting he's never gonna get that H section floor piece back in now well that's what I thought <laughs> to be honest and I thought oh no but it does go back in what you do is slide it in like that so that it goes around the rudder pedal and then next to the control column and then you can just slide it across and it goes in Whew. I was thinking that I was going to have to remove the front bulkhead and uh, I didn't want to do that so it does go in so there we go it's all together now that was a song wasn't it? all together now so it's all together now and now I can just get some glue and let the capillary action do the work like so drop on there Another drop in there. That's it. I'm just going to put a drop at the back of each one. There we are. That's in like that. That's all ready for a bit of a weathering now. So what I'm probably going to do is um, spray it all black, do the bits where there's going to be wear silver, and then spray it all green and then scratch through probably. Or I'll just do the silver weathering afterwards. I don't know. I still haven't decided. I had a question in part one. Um, how heavy am I going to go with the weathering? That's going to be determined by reference pictures I can find. Um, basically, what I don't want is a glossy blue plane. I want an aircraft that's been sun bleached. So anyway, that's in there. So I've got to have it weathered to a certain extent. So let's get rid of this paper over there and let's start looking at putting this seat together now basically the seat is four pieces as I said and this rear piece is going to go in here there we go we've got a green inside there now so I'm happy now I'm gonna just put a small dab of the quick setting on here just to hold it because I think really the sides are going to be what determines Oops. I think the size will be what determines the angle that this goes in and then we'll have to deal with the rest of it. So what I want to try and do is get that neat and tidy there, get the sides neat and tidy and if I end up having to pack out the back or whatever I will, or it might just fit together beautifully. At the moment it's looking good. But um, this is going to be another exercise in Mr. Surfacer usage, I think. So now this goes in the side here. There's cutouts in the bottom that these slip into. And they are a lovely tight fit into them. Again, as I keep saying, this is... Everything seems to be size for size. There's no clearance. Very wingnut wings-esque. So I'm going to put some glue in there. But I don't really want to be... I'm just going to file some of these. What I don't want to do is put glue in there and start and then start pushing it around. Because what will happen is the glue will lose out and I'll end up having to work on a join that I might not otherwise have to work on. That's better. So that just sits in there now. So I can put some of the quick setting in there. Okay, and I'm just going to glue the bottom. I'm not going to do the top. There we go. Now, if you look in there, I've got some glue oozing out. So I'm going to just take a knife blade and wipe that away.
There we go, it's gone. I don't want to be having to work on internal seams if I can help it. I don't mind having to brush the Mr. Surface around them, but if you have to start sanding and scraping, you generally struggle to get rid of the witnesses from sanding and scraping, in my opinion. So that's going to go in there like that. There we go, no glue, no glue oozing on that one. And the side walls. Yeah, it's going to require a bit of um, bit of jiggery pokery to get it to fit nice. So yeah, that's why I've glued the bottom first. Push it down there. There we go, we've got them square now. So, I can take some ordinary extra thin, or well not the ordinary, the um, plastic weld, and run that round to weld all that up, get it all nice and solid, and let that go off like that in that position. There we go, and then tomorrow. Once that's set hard, I can peg that, pull it back in. Very nice. I'm imagining the um, Eddard cockpit set will have a photo etch seat. However, in this scale, you really want some body to it, so I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a bit of work down there, but if I decide to use the dinghy, which is here, I'm sorry guys, in my review I called this a parachute, I don't know what I was thinking, but this is of course the dinghy, isn't it? I remember because I've got the HGW set for the uh, one thirty second scale Phantom, and um, the P51. And in that, you get the dinghy. And there we go, that's going to sit in there like that and cover everything. So I don't know, I may use it, I may not. Got these molded on straps, which is a shame. Um, it's a bit of a shame that Airfix sort of steer away from um, photo etch and stuff. But apparently, there's some law that says if you have photograph, a photo etch, it's not a toy. I, I really don't know. That was, someone told me, but probably not true. There we go. Job done. So we'll see how that looks when it's all done. Um, when it's all set and everything. So uh, there we go. So that's going to be it for me for today. And then uh, I'll be back with you tomorrow in part two. It'll still be part two, but it'll be tomorrow for me. So as I say, a million times, a few seconds for me. Sorry, a few seconds for you. A night's sleep for me. Bye bye. Right, it's Sunday. Sunday the uh, 23rd, 23rd of uh, June 2019. And um, as you can hear my voice, I've just got up and there we are. We're back on it. Um, after I left you last night, a couple of hours, I just basically clamped this together and glued the sides and then put some Mr. Surfacer on there. And then this morning I've gone over the uh, alcohol, get some alcohol and a cotton bud, just wipe over and it removes the excess Mr. Surfacer, leaves the Mr. Surfacer in the seam and you don't lose any detail. You can imagine trying to sand around those square mounting blocks there would be quite difficult. The only thing I would say, be careful of these ejector pin marks in the sides here that you filled. If you keep rubbing them with alcohol, eventually you will start to rub the um, the Mr. Surfacer out of those holes. So uh, 
there you go. And, um, yeah, if you noticed, um, Jack has made a comment, you know, thank you for the great tip on uh, Mr. Surfacer and the ejector pins. As I said, if you're used to using super glue to do your ejector pins, be very, very wary with this soft plastic because what will happen, you will... Imagine this is the surface here. You've got an ejector pin divot here. You fill it with super glue. Because the plastic around the super glue is so much softer, when you start to rub it, especially with something like a sponge, you will basically produce this. Okay, so be very, very careful. That's why I use Mr. Surfacer on this plastic because it's so soft. Um, if you notice on the Kitty Hawk Bronco I'm building, I use super glue in that because the plastic is so much harder. In fact, that Kitty Hawk plastic is very nice to work with indeed. Um, and you'll probably know if you're watching that build, I am, I am converted. Um, I'm definitely going to be getting another Kitty Hawk soon in the very near future. And if anybody who has a shop or anything would like some, uh, would like some free advertising and they want to send me that UH-60M, whatever it is, or MH-60 helicopter, then, uh, I will happily give you some, um, some uh, publicity. Um, yes, I'm scrounging again. So, right, the seat is now done. We've got this sort of raised section on the back, and I believe that's for sitting in the frame. And here's the frame here. If you are new to the hobby, you will notice that I'm breaking away a little bit from the instructions and not following them bit by bit, step by step. And that is because I'm not sure. I mean, I don't want to do this now because I want to paint everything green, and I'm going to pop that in after with the airscale stuff on it. Um, and I'm not gluing that in because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use it. And I'm not fitting the belts because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to use them. And I'm going to now glue the seat to the frame, but I'm not going to fit it because I want to make sure I get paint all in behind the seat and everything. So let me get this cleaned up and then I'll come back to you. Right, so that frame's off the sprue. Um, there's some mould seam lines around the edges of it, inside and out, which need to be cleaned off to make it look like a tube. Um, Mold seams are a result of the injection molding process, unfortunately. Some people call it burring. It's where you get the two halves of the mold come together. That would have been between the two halves of the mold. And then you get a, a seam around the edge. So it's just part of the process. What is nice on this is if you ask anybody who's started or indeed built the Typhoon, the Airfix 124 Typhoon, the seams on that were just unbelievable. The, the mold mismatch. And mismatch is where if you're trying to mold something circular it, in perfect in a perfect world your two semicircular halves of the tool would would come together dump and they would make your your round part if the guide pins are worn or the bearings are worn um you will find or the, the top mold tool has been poorly made you will find you'll get mismatch where you get this and um you'll see that a lot of older kits where you might get uh, you know a pair of wheel halves on an airliner and, and you look at it it's like you've got two discs and one's offset around the other it's, it's just horrendous mold mismatch is probably the biggest nightmare we have for uh, for modeling but anyway i'm waffling um so on my kit this was slightly bent uh, back like that so i've just given it a tweak just to straighten it up and you'll see there's a couple of grooves in the back of the seat that this goes into so We've got a square hole in the bottom there that it fits in. Again, it's that wing nut wings type fit. It's absolutely solid. It just clips in there. So I've, I've cleaned it out a little bit just to give it a bit of room. And then I'm just going to put some of the extra thin in there. And just let that set. And then if you notice the top of the seat, the, the, the top of the rail, it's pulled away from the seat. So we need to clamp that in. Now, this is something I've covered <clears throat> quite a lot in my videos and what you need to be careful of if you glue it and then squeeze it you'll get glue oozing out so what you need to do is clamp it first and then glue it now that's only going to do one side at a time so that's okay so I'm not going to use that actually because it's going to want to fall off let me see what else I can find I've got one of my inverted clothes pegs here and we also need to be careful that we're not pulling the frame. It needs to be, remain vertical, otherwise the seat will be sat on an angle. So that's what that groove's for. There's a groove either side of the, the rear back of the seat. Um, I've also now realised that these ejector pin marks on the back of the seat, you don't need to do anything about them. So basically, what Airfix have done here, they've done a really good job. There are ejector pin marks, yes, and there have been some negative comments about them in my reviews. 
but it would appear that 90% of them um, don't need to be removed. So a lot of people do like to remove them. You'll notice there's a lot of comments, people saying they want to remove them, but a lot of people don't like doing it. They, a lot of modelers will say, what's the point in doing something you're never going to see? I agree, but I enjoy the, the modeling side of things. So let's just check that stayed vertical. It has. So there we go. And now we can come along and do the other side. And by the way, guys, I'm using the extra thin quick setting. So that's why I'm able to um, get onto this so quickly. And I can tell you this extra thin quick setting and Airfix plastic are a, are a match made in heaven. There we go. So that frame is now glued onto the seat like so. And the seat will mount in here so it's going to sit down in there and then go back into those square holes in the bulkhead like that and there's our seat fitted so as you can see now when we're looking down in the cockpit all this lovely pipe work and detail and all that is all going to just disappear <laughs> but um it's all part of the fun in the modeling i think so yeah basically those ejector pin marks in those panels there probably don't need to do anything about them because when you're looking down into the cockpit, you're not going to see them anyway. <clears throat> so just to recap, these there's ejector pin marks up here. You can leave them. These down here I would do. There's a couple of, in the bottom. Um, you don't need to do them. Those parts there don't need them taken out. You don't need to do any on the seat. If you're going to use the, the, um, the dinghy in the bottom, you don't need to worry about that. Um, but you definitely need to do these in the sides here. And I think that's it really. Um, so I, I've basically wasted a lot of time doing ejector pin marks, but hey, I enjoy it. So um, that's the seat fitted there. Now, as I say, I'm not going to put this in because I'm not, I'm not sure I'm going to use it. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we look at HGW for the P51 Mustang, they do a, um, a set where you've got the wooden floor you've got the dinghy and you get the seat belts. Now they may do a similar thing for this, obviously without the wooden floor. So I'm not gonna glue any of this in yet. Um, and I'm not gonna be put, fitting this into the, into the fuselage until I hear back from HGW on their plans. So what I may actually do is end up going forward and I will stop here. I'll do the work, but I won't put, actually glue the cockpit into the fuselage. Um, because putting the belts on once it's in, I think would be a lot more difficult. So, and I'm not gonna glue the seat in now either because I wanna make sure I get paint all in behind it. So there we go, it looks lovely, doesn't it? It really does look very, very nice indeed. Really impressed. So, I'm gonna go on now to this part here. Um, Cause as I say, I'm not fitting the belts, I'm not fitting the dinghy, I'm not gluing the seat in. So we go on to this part here and get these bits in. So I'll get these off the sprue and then I'll come back for you. Okay, so uh, gone on to the here now, step 17. D4 is the hydraulic hand pump that's fitted now and in there nicely, got rid of the seam on that one. And then we've got these three fuel filler ports. They, um, they're basically, these are boxes which will be riveted into the fuselage skin and then they'll have a tube coming out of them and then there'll be a tube coming from the tank below and they'll be connected together with a rubber um, a rubber tube and a pair of jubilee clips and they are visible when you look down inside the uh, cockpit so i have decided to replicate the rubber hosing um, and the jubilee clips so basically i've got some tamiya tape here which i've cut down to four mil wide this is six mil tamiya tape and seven mil long which is just about enough to go around. So I'll take a piece of this and just add this and I'll start on the inside. You can see I've marked these three, one, two, three, just in case they're different. They all look the same, but you never know. Um, so that can go around like that. Now I wanna make sure it stays parallel and doesn't go off on a, on a helix. There we go. So that's the rubber sleeve. And then we've got these little bits here I've cut off, which are slightly longer. So we can put them on. This is 0.5 jammy dog tape, it's called. And that can go around like so. 
and then another one. See that guy's unprepared this time, just like Blue Peter. And then just go around with that one. Whoops, went off a bit there. Let's try and stay parallel with the end. Get a bit closer to the end. And once this has had some paint on it, it'll lock it all down and it will stay there forever. There we go. So there you can see what we've got is the hose with the clips on it. So paint that black silver, dry brush it, it'll look great. So that will go in there. And as you can see, this one's number three. So that's the rear one. And as you can see, that's going to sit in there like so again we've got an extremely good fit and it doesn't want to go in let's try another one just to show you there we go so yeah that's that sits in there and then when you look in you will actually see that that black rubber sat on there all right so i'll do the others now and then i'll come back to you all right they're on now so you can see those three there with their rubber hoses and jubilee clips on them the one advice piece of advice i would give you that airfix don't is try this in the fuselage because um basically you want them to be in contact with the side so what i'm doing here is just pushing them out slightly before the glue sets and then you can see on the inside of the fuselage here we've got these little lugs that they pick up on so we need to make sure that the when we push the uh when we push it all together that those fuel fillers are contacting the sides and you can see that front one's not so the rear one is that's absolutely fine so I'll take this away now and not disturb the position I'm just going to tweak this one out a bit more and then I can offer the cockpit into the fuselage there hold it in place and then squeeze the front down so it fits and it's still not touching so maybe it's out of line longitudinally yeah, it needs to go back a touch by the look of it. So I'll put it out and back. And then push that down in. And then close up the fuselage. And now the back one's not touching either. So there's obviously something moved. Nope. I'm just going to push them out. There we go. Now they're both in contact. So that's what you want. You, you want it to look sort of seamless, really. It's no good having them just sat there flapping around like a tree. <laughs> and uh, just test check this side again. I've already done this side, but just to show you, that side goes in like that. And then when we pull the fuselage halves together, you can see there's no gap there. All right, so that's what you're looking for. So we'll let those cure now before we touch them. They need to be set rock solid. So I'm just going to put a drop more glue in them because I've tweaked them. And now we can leave them to set. Okay. And just to show you something I didn't tell you earlier. Um, this tape, Jammy Dog tape, it's great stuff. Micro Masker tape. This is 0.5 millimeters wide. And that's what I've used for those little uh, Jubilee clips. And as I say, it looks like it's not going to stick. But once it's been on there for an hour and um, it's amazing you mask a model of this stuff and you, you, you pull away and it sticks to your finger when you actually unmask it it really has bonded itself on so um yeah obviously these uh, parts they do all look the same but they're not they're different angles certainly those two may be the same but this diff this rear one obviously is a different angle so make sure you don't get mixed up on that so um i'll leave those now to go off and then uh we'll move on to the next part of the instructions I just want to show you this guys I've I've dry fitted the seat obviously into the cockpit then I've dry fitted the harnesses in and the dinghy is in there as well I mean look at that kudos to Airfix I mean they have done an absolutely stunning job well Chris has he's the designer I mean look at it it's, I may well use these seat belts I don't know but if I can get some cloth ones I will but um they I mean <laughs> It's breathtaking it's just wonderful i just wish there was some stitching detail on the seat belts and then i would definitely use them if there was because they've got that the um they're nearly white aren't they these harnesses and then they've got that 
definite black line of stitching down the middle of them. So, but I mean, really, when you think this is a third of the price of the HK Lancaster, I mean, you know, this is cheaper than a HK Mosquito, I think. It's just unbelievable. It's, I mean, fair play to where I fix it. They've done an amazing job. I'm, I'm just amazed by those, how good those harnesses look in plastic. So, um, I may use them yet. Uh, the other thing I want to show you, oh dear, let's see, that's, <laughs> there we go, just to prove it was all dry fitted. Um, so that is it for the D-sprue. Now obviously I haven't done this bit here, step nine. So I've cut this out of the sprue. All right, so I can put that in the box to one side and then um, come back to that when I need it. So now we can take this sprue, snap it in half and put it in the bin. So with that, I'm going to say this is it for part two. And then part three, we'll start on the uh, cockpit sidewalls. And I'm going to have to start doing some work on these parts to integrate the air scale parts because um, because we've got these side consoles here with um, some switch detail and stuff on them. And the air scale parts, hang on, I've jumped. No. Okay, so they're telling you to put the, the, the cockpit in here into the fuselage. I'm not going to do that yet. What I'm going to do, um, I don't think that seal should be green either. I think that should be the fuselage colour. Um, I'm going to do all this, incorporate the, uh, the air scale stuff, get all this painted and then put the cockpit in after. So, um, excuse me. So come back for part three and uh, I'll try and get a plan together. How, how on earth I'm going to make all this work. I don't know. What I might do first of all is glue these tank halves together so they've got time to cure and then we can work on the seams. So um, thanks for watching this. If you've enjoyed it, please give us a like and a subscribe. Um, I can see this model is attracting what hell of a lot of interest. Um, I have never seen so many subscribers join uh, in, a, in a 24 hour period. So this is even more popular than the HK Lancaster was. So um, thanks for watching. As I say, give us a like, give me a subscribe, and if you want to support the channel, I'm, I'm trying to get some money up together for a, for a better camera at the moment. I use an iPhone, so uh, have a look over on Patreon as well. So um, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.